Hello and welcome to the show. Today we have with us Nana Lal Kidwai, whom we have known, of course, as the person heading HSBC's India operations, but who is also uh, now uh, wearing a new hat, which is president of FIKI. Ms. Kidwai, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, you have uh, taken over, of course, uh, as the president at a time when there is a lot of strife within the industry. The economy seems to be slowing down. Uh, investments are drying up. Uh, so when you look at it, what are the biggest challenges before corporate India today? Well, I think I've taken over uh, as now just uh, a few days ago at a very exciting time because what I have the advantage of being able to discuss and talk about are a number of reforms which we have waited for a long, long time. So retail FDI sort of set the pace and we have in what was a tremendous showing by Parliament sitting late, clearing the bills through active discussion, both on the company's bill and the banking bill. And I think if this is what the new working of Parliament is about, it's about engagement, it's about discussion, it is about the ruling party accepting that there are certain things that they will amend in, with a view to letting the bill go forward, active debate and business getting done in Parliament, then I'm proud to be in this position today because it is really a harbinger of good things to come. And you can feel it in the sentiment today. Uh, there is, at, at the worst, I would call it cautious optimism. Uh, at the best, I would like to believe we are tilting back to a mood which is indeed almost uh, uh, euphoric, euphoric that finally India is back on the go. And it's reflected in the way our stock markets have responded. It's reflected in the way industry is talking. Corporate India uh, is not a uniformly bus story. There are sectors which have clearly suffered, sectors like power, infrastructure. Uh, these are areas which uh, have had a really bad year, but we're seeing the return of brownfield projects. So as in projects which were stuck and now beginning to move ahead. And I think some of the initiatives there again through the Cabinet Committee on Investment are very important to clear the log jams, which are often of an interministerial nature, yes. coal into power, into the state level distribution structures, and they need resolution by everybody sitting at the table and developing that consensus. But do you think that these measures which were recently taken by the government, you talked about allowing uh, FDI in retail, FDI yeah. in aviation was also amended yes. to allow foreign airlines to invest in. Yes. Uh, the government, of course, uh, the banking amendment laws bill has been passed. Uh, when you look at it, but do you think that's sufficient? Uh, do you think that the cabinet committee on investment will be able to actually spur growth? Because uh, because there are still a lot of things which need to be done. The industry is still not investing. You, you said yes. very correctly that brownfield is still picking up, but on the, uh, if you talk about greenfield, greenfield investments, yeah. there's nothing happening. Yeah. The industry doesn't seem to be yeah. still willing to bet its rupee of course. Uh, uh, on, 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 on growth. Yeah. So I think it is uh, a journey, and uh, we have come from a mood of despair and pessimism into one which is turning. Uh, it could turn back. So it's going to be very important for us to seize this change and keep marching ahead. And we have to do it as a country and all constituents of society have to work together to make this happen. And I think, again, I view, therefore, the platform that FIKI provides as a very important one because it's an enabler, an enabler for government, for business and industry and civil society to sit together and thrash through some of these issues. So it is important for all arms of society to sit together. And it's not going to be a win-win for everyone, but we're going to have to work on this together. And if you look now at some of the policies that have come through the company's bill, this 2% of net profit for CSR, yes. it's a rather unusual one. You don't see this in many countries. You don't see this in any country, to my view. Uh, it's there now. So how is industry going to rise to this challenge? How should this be viewed is all about now the engagement of industry into a sustainable growth for itself, but also engaging with the nation in terms of its requirements. And this balance is going to have to be maintained in a very delicate way. And I'm really glad that government has not made it mandatory right now. It has said that it's a guideline. Uh, there's certainly a desire to get to a stage where the 2% spend happens. But it's for industry to work out how it does it. And 
in order to work out how it does it, it will have to engage with civil society. It needs to identify where it goes. And my own view on this is because the dilemma for listed companies will be at the end of the day, you have shareholders who want returns. Uh, you have stakeholders who want to engage with the company entirely for its own uh, yes. returns and benefit. Now, how do you balance that with this spend? So do you feel that this 2% is a viable uh, model? Corporates I, can I, I achieve think that target? Tough. I think it's tough because corporates are well, first going to assemble data and they may actually pleasantly surprise of how much they do actually do if you define it in the space of building the right environmental practices and you should and must be able to include the fact that you have spent on making your building energy efficient or water yeah. efficient. I yeah. mean, that's, it's a big plus yeah. because it really, at the end of the day, it makes you a responsible citizen. Uh, so you could do it in those spaces. You could do it around every community around you. So if I employ from labor from the villages around me, why do I just want that laborer to stay well? I need to make sure his family stays well because if True. they're not well, there'll be absenteeism. True. If there's disease there, it will spread to him. So the whole village should be healthy, you should have drinking water. So if you begin to defend it in terms of how you keep your environments happy and well, uh, you know, it's certainly it's, it's, it's possible. But it will take corporates time to identify the projects which work for them. And uh, I think we have to give them that time to build up to what is required. But I have no doubt that uh, corporate India has not objected strongly. It's interesting, has not objected strongly to this objective. Yes. Uh, if at all, it was more nuanced around enable us to do what we would like and allow the definition to be wide enough for us to do what we can do best. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app. Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time. And Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.